Hey there guys, it's Vampire Preacher and I'm here with another toy unboxing. Today, we're doing, we've been doing a lot of MCU waves because that's what's been coming out, but you can probably tell by the shirt, we're not doing an MCU wave this week. No, no, this week, we are doing the Spider-Man Kingpin Marvel Legend wave. I'm actually really excited about this. I've got the previous Kingpin figure, but it's been ages. So long, in fact, that the last time we got a figure of Kingpin that fit in with the Marvel Legends line, it was the face-off version of Kingpin that came with Daredevil, either masked or unmasked, as a two-pack, which was... Oh, we're talking over a decade ago. This has been a very long time coming. So, I know I'm pumped. I hope you guys are as pumped as I am. So, enough of me talking. Let's get into what we've got here. So, our first figure on the docket today, just because he's got the biggest accessory, we're going to go with Puma. Now, some of you might not remember Puma. Puma is a rather obscure one of Spidey's rogues gallery of villains. Uh, he's been pretty big in the comics. He was in the animated series in the 90s, a little bit here and there, but nothing huge. So, of course, in here we've got what we always have. We've got our window pane here with our figure and our build to figure piece, our artistic representation on the side. This is actually not an artistic representation on the back, but just a picture of the figure. Been a while since we've seen one of these. And of course, the remainder of the line here. And if you guys can't tell, most of these have numbers next to them. The first one does not. The first one was Six Armed Spider Man, and I am not going to be unboxing that steaming pile. No, thank you. Uh, in a few weeks, I will be unboxing a figure based off of the mold from the Six Armed Spider Man. But that is actually the doppelganger figure. That I'm a lot more excited for than the, just the six arm Spidey. Sorry, it doesn't do it for me. Alright, but enough of me talking. You're here to see toys. So, let's show you what we got. Inside of our packaging here, we're pretty bare bones as far as accessories go. We're not getting a whole lot of stuff to go along with Puma. We're just pretty much getting what you see. In this case, what you see consists of Puma and the torso from Kingpin. Now, if you're a big fan of the wave, once I'm done with it, know that these figures are out right now. They're a little bit tricky to find, but you can find them at your local retailers. Uh, kind of like the backing of this, it's kind of a artsy spider web with the Spider-Man logo is just tossed in there. That's kind of neat. So, like I said, all that we've got here, and I, I will admit, I do really love the packaging here, the way they've done this, where it looks as though Puma is standing on top of the torso of the Kingpin. I'm a big fan of that. That looks really neat to me. Speaking of, we have Kingpin's torso here with his jacket, which is a removable piece. Uh, it's probably not going to be removable once we get the arms on, because I don't think our uh, our boy Willie here has a whole lot of flexibility to him. But I do like the mold that they've done here. It looks really nice. Uh, his waistcoat looks cool. They've even got the buttons all done up. Um, they could have easily just not done that. I think it looks really nice. We're going to set that aside for our final reveal of our build to figure. Before we do our two bonus unboxings, you heard me, two, and one of those bonus unboxings is a two-pack. Is it cheating? I don't care. We're doing a three extra figures other than what's in the wave, because it's what I've got. Now, as you're taking them out, do note that Puma has some feathers coming out the back of his head, so make sure you don't rip those off by accident. Because that would stink. Alright, and he's out. Now, I will give them a lot of credit with Puma here. He seems to be very much new molding. Uh, these forearms are obviously new. 
The boot bottoms, I believe, are new. They might be based off the Felicia Hardy Black Cat's first version that I that we saw of her back from the Ultimate build figure of Green Goblin. Um, the face is very expressive. He's kind of snarling. Um, it's a neat looking figure. Just aesthetically, he's neat. He definitely uh, cuts a very unique image. The necklace, as you can tell, is not secured on in any way. It's just kind of on there. Uh, it moves around just as it pleases. Uh, I almost wish that they had kind of gotten this down on the costume. Just to make it a little bit better for taking pictures. It would look a lot better if it were actually glued down here like this. Uh, it's not like that interferes with articulation in any way. It just kind of would stick better that way. But it is what it is. So, I believe our claws are reuse of previous claws, although I might be wrong. It looks like we might actually have, uh, if you see very fine there, there's some hair texturing on the back of the hands. That's uh, rather unique. Actually, he's got a fine hair texturing kind of all over his arms. That's really nice, and I hope that they reuse that for, I don't know, vermin, werewolf by night. Literally anyone who's covered in hair. <laughs> Uh, that would be rather cool. But, enough of me just talking about the figure, and honestly gushing about the aesthetics a little. Although the belt seems to be a reuse, which, it's kind of a clever reuse. I'm pretty sure this is the same belt that they used for Century, or at least it looks very similar. It's not bad. Just aesthetically looking at it, it's not a bad figure. I'm sure he's going to look really cool on my shelf. As for our articulation, we always start off with the head, so we're actually looking down really well. He's looking down in a stalkerish predator type of way. I really like how that's looking. And for his upward range of motion, wow, he actually has a really great upward range there. I can almost see him being on all fours and kind of a sprint forward lunging at Spider-Man like this. That would be actually a really cool pose for him. For our arm articulation, we always check it out first. How are we going here? Can we at least... Oh! Oh! Out the bat, we're going better than a T-pose. All right. Compared to last week's, that's a huge improvement for our uh, arm articulation here. Now, I will note that the way they've got him packaged uh, did warp this elbow a little bit. It should be a little bit more straight like this. Uh, that can easily be remedied with a little bit of boiling water, setting it, and then doing some cool water over it. Uh, just an ice bath real quick after will make it so that that's all right. But that's for after we're done here. Uh, we also, of course, have our bicep swivel. We do have double-jointed elbows. At first, when I saw it, I thought they were only single-joint. I was very wrong. But, how... Wow! Color me impressed. And I mean, seriously, color me impressed. I was thinking, looking at Puma here, he wasn't ever, ever going to be able to get that good flex. Not a chance in the world. He can... But he is. He's... He's got it. Good job. He's got biceps, yet he can also do the flex. Hey, well done, Hasbro. He, of course, has the inward and outward wrist articulation. Uh, it's hampered a little bit by some of the sculpt here. Uh, namely, the sculpt here has a little bit of flash on it that's hindering his wrist from going in anymore. And... Going outward, he actually has a little bit of flash on the back here from the fur. It makes it so that that's as far back as his hand goes. It's still alright. I'm not going to complain about it. That's still actually pretty good. Uh, as a note, the armband here is not secured by anything. It's just kind of friction on there. Um, but it's staying on a lot better than some of the previous ones that we've seen. 
for his waist articulation. We, of course, have an ab crunch, and we're going... Wow! A really surprising degree forward. And going backwards... He's got a decent amount of flex. He's not quite bending over backwards for you, ladies, but he does have some decent flex to him. That's not bad. We have a waist cut, but it's very cleverly hidden by this belt that we've got here. Uh, you'd need to move the belt either up or down to really get the full range of motion out of it, but it also means that he can turn without having that really weird waistline, as he does, so... Good on you, Hasbro. I'm actually really impressed with this figure. <laughs> to think, a more obscure figure is getting better reviews than a mainline character from last week. For our hip articulation. Ouch! That is it. That's as far as those hips are going. You're not going to get a wide stance from him. We do, of course, have the thigh cut here, the double jointed knees, is that it? What's it even getting held up by? Bad form. For all the right things you did, that is just not good. There's a little bit of texturing to the pant leg here, but... Not enough to make it so that's barely 90 degrees. Puma, you're not getting out of the hospital after a knee transplant with that. Or a knee replacement, rather. I, I'm sorry, man. That's just not going to cut it. You're going to have to keep on flexing to get that done. He does have a boot cut. As he should, because he has these boot covers. Now, an interesting thing is the boot covers here are not held down by anything. They're just kind of friction on there. But because of the way the cut is, uh, it really actually works for our feet, which look to be a, I'm not sure if that's a new mold or if it's a redone mold, but it, it's interesting for a barefoot model, that's for certain. For certain, not for sure, or for certain, but for sure, <laughs> or certain. English, motherfucker, do you speak it? For his feet articulation. Our inward and outward ankle articulation is greatly hindered by this boot cover here. Uh, that's as far in as he can go, and that's as far out. And that's all you're getting out of him. For his forward feet articulation, ow, that's not even being hindered by anything. That's just it. That's as far forward as you're going. And for his backward, he can't quite go on point, but he's getting close. Uh... A lot of it has to do with these boot covers, just making it so that he doesn't have that great a range. All in all, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I really like it. <laughs> I think it's a great... He is a great use of some of the existing molds, but a lot of him is new mold. Re it's just a new mold for a good portion of him. Um... He's got some great upper body flexibility. His legs could use a little bit of work. But all in all, for a very visceral melee fighter who's very athletic, one who moves around a lot, he's pretty good. Um, I might actually have him, as I was saying before, in that, uh, that running pose, very much like Sabretooth, on all fours just kind of bounding towards Spider-Man. Because that just seems like such a unique pose and such a uniquely Puma thing to do. Uh, out of 10, I'm going to give this guy a solid 7. I didn't think I'd like him that much. It's Puma. Who would have thought that Puma would be so far? I mean, granted, it's the first review today, but he's great. <laughs> I'm shocked. All right, so we have a couple more figures here. We've got two ladies, two villains, and two heroes. So let's go with another. Let's get. Let's keep on going. Obs nah, let's not go obscure. We'll give him. We'll give him a minute. We went villain, so let's go hero. So the next one we have is 
Symbiote Spider-Man. Now, you'll remember that we recently got another Symbiote Spider-Man, the classic Symbiote Spider-Man that we've seen hundreds of times over. Uh, we got him in the Sandman Wave. This is based off of Dan Slott's art, uh, which I'm not that familiar with Slott. I'll be honest, he's more of a new artist. I'm more of a classic comic fan. Um, I do know that he comes with the two different heads for the Kingpin build figure. Let's get into what we've got here. So, of course, we've got our window pane, we've got our art, and we've got our figure with our lineup on the back and the blurb, which I forgot to mention on the previous one. Don't tell anybody. All right, so. Everybody knows now. Inside the packaging. Let's see what we've got here up close. So, we've got that same backing. Looks kind of cool. We also have two different kingpin heads. Now, I do like this trend that they've been doing with their build -to figures, where they give not one, but two different heads. It makes their build -to figures a little more expressive. Uh, we saw it last week with the Smart Hulk wave, where he had the smirking face and kind of a neutral face. I really wish the game a screaming face and a smirking face. Uh, we got that with Kingpin here, where we've got a neutral face and a screaming face. Because uh, if I'm having Kingpin hold up Spider-Man by the neck, it's going to be with him screaming. If I have him just neutral, it's going to be with a bunch of guys in suits behind him as his own personal army. So we're going to pop that to the side. We're going to pop on the head to our build to figure for our, of course, final review of the wave. As we always do, where we review the build to figure last, Willie Fisk here is, and say it with me, kids, a big, beefy boy already, and I only have a head and a torso. So, that's saying something. Now, inside the packaging here, we have Spider-Man and two extra hands. Now, I also like that they've been doing that a lot with uh, their figures, that they are giving us extra hands. Since they no longer have the finger articulation, like we did back in the days of Toy Biz, we instead now have extra hands, which, either way, I'll take it. Uh, the extra hands, they look a lot nicer, uh, because it's one static pose that does their static pose well, instead of having an open hand that has articulated fingers that can't really make a fist, but you can kind of halfway imagine a fist to it. This, you've got the open hand with, if you look closely here, uh, the fingertips are clawed, much like the cotton mouth hand. Um, they're very similar to Puma's hand, but they're a lot thinner and spindlier. That's a weird word for today. Anyway... And, of course, we've got the fist, which is an actual fist. Another similarity that I notice is, actually, we've got the exact same feet that we had for Puma. Uh, they're a different size, of course, but it looks to be very much the same mold. Uh, they have the spiked toes here. So, I'm not sure where that's a reuse from, or if they're just milking that part for all they can in this wave. Um, but it, it's very... It's a very nice touch to go along with the symbiote version of Spidey here. Uh, a thing of note is, with this unique art style, the eyes are actually not 100% attached. If you look closely here, his eye lens is actually coming off of the head on each side. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. That just looks like a bunch of flesh that's going to get caught on something and get torn off. Uh, I might replace his head with the head from the previous symbiote suit Spider-Man uh, just to make a little bit nicer symbiote suit Spidey because that's just not something I'm a big fan of. If you're a fan of Dan Slott's art then of course you'll love the wing tips there. I'm just not a big fan. For our articulation let's start off at the head. He's looking down actually really well. And he can look up pretty decently. 
Uh, I'm not going to say he can do a flying through the air, going straight down from a building pose, but he can go pretty decently far back. Uh, there's a little bit at the back of the head here that really limits just how far forward, or how far back rather, his head can go. Uh, it's not bad though. For our shoulder articulation. Now I do note that this is on the 2099 body, which I'm very much a fan of. It gives him a lot more articulation, including the butterfly shoulders, which we'll get into in a moment. But, first things first, for our shoulder articulation. Huh. Uh, we're going up decently well. It's not a full T pose, but we can at least get to a T on his right hand side. On his left hand, not so much. Uh, he's got this weird angle going on here. Uh, he does have, of course, the bicep cuts. We also have the double jointed elbows, which amazingly aren't flexing as well as Puma's. They're flexing pretty well. He's almost got that good flex, but it's not quite hitting it. It's pretty good though. It's pretty good. Of course, we also have the inward and outward wrist articulation. But, as mentioned before, we also have the butterfly shoulders, which means that we have this additional range of motion going forward. I'm trying to make sure that that arm is completely lined up. That might be why we weren't getting that 100%. There we go! At least we're T-posing now. But, yes, we've got that extra forward arm articulation. Actually, if you even move these around, you can go even more forward with your articulation here. Getting his arms pretty much going straight forward and of course because of the butterflies they can also go backward in this rather painful looking way but it does help for Spider-Man pulling back for quite a heck of a wallop. I always love the fact that there are butterfly shoulders and they try and include them in all the Spider-Man figures. Uh, they just really add to articulation for such an agile fighter. For our waist articulation, we're going forward actually really well and going backward a decent way. Not great, but decent. We of course have our waist articulation here with our hip cut. Our waist cut rather, for our hips. Better than we were getting with Puma, but not the best we've seen. Uh, you're getting a decently wide stance from him, but it could be better. We, of course, have thigh cuts, as per usual. At this point, if we didn't have thigh cuts, it would be a concern. We have the double-jointed knee. Wow! That is a great flex. That is what I'm expecting from a Spidey. That looks amazing. We do not have a boot cut of any sort on here. Uh, honestly, I think it would break up the sculpt if we did, but again, just because I like my Spider-Man to be a mess of articulation, I'd kind of like it. For our rocker ankles, we can go a disturbing degree in and a painful degree out. Going forward, we've got a decent degree of motion there, and of course, I could already tell we could go all the way on point with Spidey here. All in all, I'll be honest, I'm not that familiar with the artistic design of the character. I'm not. I'm not that familiar with Dan Slott's run on Spider-Man, but it's not a bad design for the character. Um, it looks really cool. It's got great articulation. It's not bad. All in all, not a bad figure. Is it my favorite symbiote Spidey? Well, I've got a lot of symbiote Spider-Man. A lot of symbiote Spider-Man. I seriously have like three or four black suit Spider-Man now. But, that being said, he's not bad. 
Um, I really do really appreciate the uh, butterfly shoulders there. That's what's going to make him get a 7 out of 10 for me. Uh, if I was more familiar with the art style, I might give him an even higher grade. But all in all, he's not bad. All right. Moving on from Spider-Man here, we're going to get into Ladies' Night. That's right, because in this wave, we have not one, but two female figures, something that Hasbro's not really known for doing. They're generally afraid of making any more than one female figure in a wave because they say that the girl figures just don't sell. Gee, I wonder why that is, Hasbro. Maybe if you put more work into tooling them, gave them better ab crunches, gave them double-jointed elbows, maybe they would sell better because they would just be better action figures. So, we will go into our first female anti-hero, Black Cat. Now, I did mention this is not the first Black Cat figure we've gotten in recent memory. We had the Black Cat from the Green Goblin, Ultimate Green Goblin wave who's more of a classic black cat. This one is once again based on Dan Slott's art style. It's a unique take on the character. I'm not sure if I love it or hate it just looking at it before I even get into the articulation. But before I do that, before I make any judgments, let's see what we've got. So we've got our window pane on the front here showing you all of our accessories and what's inside. Our art on the side. Our picture of the figure on the back, our blurb, and the lineup of all the other figures in the wave. So, inside of here. We have... Pretty much what you saw from the outside. Uh, you're not going to be getting anything new and unexpected when you open it up. It's not going to be like the Worthy Cap figure where there's a hidden Thor hammer behind the shield. Inside we've got our left arm of Kingpin and Kingpin's rather nice new cane. I actually like this better than the cane I have for the other Kingpin figure, the face-off one. We've got Black Cat's whip, which is a very uniquely stylized whip here. It's also very thin. Like, that's an incredibly thin whip. Um, I think it's just based on the kind of whip that she uses in Slot's Run. Which is, I'm going to guess, more of a metallic whip than a standard leather whip. Because, yes, it's more practical, but no, it's nowhere near as fun. So, before we get into our figure here, let's get that arm onto our kingpin. Oh, yeah, that is a beefy figure. Oh, I'd say that Willie here needs to go on a diet, but we know that Wilkson Fisk, even though he appears fat, is actually 100% muscle. That's why he is stupid strong. I'm even going to give him his cane here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's already a really nice looking figure. I'm really happy about what we've seen there. looking good. Alright, so to our black cat. Uh, this is a very different take on Felicia Hardy than I'm personally used to. I'm used to the classic version. Let's just put it as that. I can already tell our neck articulation is going to be hindered greatly by this mane of hair. But let's see this uh, this whip belt here is kind of throwing me off. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's throwing me off a little bit. It's weirdly wrapped around her body and her leg. 
All right, getting into it for our neck articulation. Oh, she can look down pretty well. She can actually look down really well. Even with the collar around her neck, her chin goes directly in the middle of the collar. She can look down incredibly well. Looking up, of course, her head is... Com her articulation is completely limited by this mane of hair. Uh, she can look forward, and that's as far up as you're going. That's it. That is all we've got here. For our shoulder articulation... Hey! Better than a T-pose! Alright, we've got a touchdown! Going from the opposite way. Looks a little painful, but that's some good shoulder articulation. Uh, we do not have a bicep cut. And of course we only have single jointed elbows on our figure here. But, you already know what I'm going to say. You guys have seen me do it a hundred times now. Hasbro, stop it. Get some help. Give us double jointed elbows on our female figures. Give us. Give us more than this. It feels phoned in. Come on, guys. Especially since that's all the flex we're getting out of her. With these single jointed elbows, that's all the flex we're getting. Is that that good flex? You and I both know. That's not that good flex. We need this. She's a strong female character. She's a strong anti-hero. We need that good flex. We need to see her be able to give us a little bit of that, a little bit of that bicep action. That's not doing it. We have wrist articulation, and is it the up and down? Did they? Did they? Oh my dear, sweet, merciful heavens! They did. We actually have the proper wrist articulation. I wish that I had some kind of effect right now for just confetti, because they actually gave us an up and down wrist articulation for a character that uses a whip. I, I, I can't believe it. They gave us the correct wrist articulation instead of the in and out. It's the up and down. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the up and down. Don't be alarmed. As for her wrist here, it is also the up and down. That's slightly unusual. Uh, usually with the claw hands like this, they only give the in and out, but they gave the up and down here too. All right. Some weird, unique choices. Uh, again, the fur here is just kind of put on by friction. It spins pretty freely. Uh, we do not have a ab crunch on her. We only have a waist swivel. So, that means that we've got a little bit of side-to-side -side action here and here. For our forward, that's it. Did you blink? And you missed it. That's all of our forward ab articulation and all of our backward. For such a flexible character, you would think that Hasbro would have given some better articulation to make her more flexible and agile as an expert cat burglar. We, of course, have no waist cut because female figures and Hasbro is just allergic to fun. For our hip articulation, went a little bit for. Hmm, that's funny. If you've got the legs and you're just going side to side, it only goes so far, but it actually forces the legs outward slightly to get a better hip articulation to it. Otherwise, I'll be honest, this uh, this hip articulation is not the greatest if it's going straight side to side. Uh, only if it is allowed to roll forward does it get a little bit better hip articulation. She does have, of course, a thigh cut for the double jointed knees. That's actually going back a pretty decent degree. We do have some flash on these leg warmers here that are keeping her from having even better backward leg articulation, but it's not bad. Uh, we do not have a boot cut of any sort, even though it would kind of make sense with this figure to do so. Uh, for our ankle articulation, 
Our rocker ankle is going a pretty decent degree in and a pretty painful degree out. Uh, especially for having the leg warmers on her. Going forward, it's a decent degree forward and a actually she can go all the way on point back. Uh, all in all, as a figure, do I think that she's fantastic? No. Do I think she's a great representation of Black Cat? Again, no. Uh, maybe I'm wrong for the slot version of Black Cat. Maybe this is the perfect figure that all of you slot fans have been dying for. But for me, this ain't my Felicia Hardy. She's... She's not nearly flexible enough, and honestly, the big cat eyes on the cat suit here just throw me off so much. Like, that's just... It's drawing attention to yourself, Felicia. Come on. We get what you're going for. You don't need to have great big kitty cat eyes on your chest. Don't bother with that. All in all, it's a five. Maybe if you're a bigger fan of the art, you'd say it's higher up. Um, its articulation is very limited. Uh, this, again, this whip around the waist and the thigh here just really throw me off. Uh, the hip articulation's kind of weird. Uh, the mane of hair is really limiting how much her head can go backward. It's a five. Get her for the build figure piece. Get her if you're a big fan of Dan Slott's art style. Or his run, rather, of the comics. But if you're a big fan of Black Cat, try and find the original one. If you can't, it's a good substitute. You'll at least have a Black Cat in your display. It's not quite the one from the Spider-Man PS4 game. It's not quite the original comic run. But it's something if you are lacking a Black Cat in your display. So, seeing as how we've been going with kind of a pattern here, let's continue our pattern. So, we went villain, we went hero, and we went anti-hero female. That's a very niche final one there. That's very niche for the last one. So, going back to villain, we have the Red Goblin. Now, you guys will note that my box is pretty messed up. The front's caved in. The side's been ripped off. I wonder what that is, GameStop. I wonder why you guys can't ship me a figure, even to your store, without it being all kinds of messed up. Anyway, we've got our window pane front, we've got our <laughs> art on the side, we've got our picture of the figure on the back, and, of course, the blurb up here, the lineup down here. Now, many of you out there might be saying, what's a Red Goblin? So, Red Goblin is the amalgamation of Carnage and the Green Goblin. This is what happens when the Carnage symbiote takes over Norman Osborn. So... In the packaging, we've got the Carnage Tendrils. We have a very uniquely stylized pumpkin bomb here. Uh, you can tell this is also from Dan Slott's run, as the eyes are very similar to the symbiote Spider-Man that we saw earlier. I'm trying to get the leg out, but it seems like we might need to get out red goblin first before we can pop out this kingpin leg that just did not want to come out no matter what I did of course we're going to pop that onto our build to figure for our final review of the wave Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Guys, I like this figure already. I like him a lot. I, I already really like that figure. <laughs> Alright, so, 
Of course, because we've got our symbiote tendril, so let's just kind of pop those onto our back here. So we can see how the whole image looks together. He's a very unique look. Uh, I'm trying to see if we've got any kind of hulks to indicate that the tail is bendy here. And we do not. Uh, I believe we do not have a bendy tail. We just have a soft goods tail. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. And I thought we might have mouth articulation. We don't. We just have a softer mouthpiece that is separate from the head. We have some very unique choices in this figure. Um, now, of course, being a huge fan of the Green Goblin, the Hobgoblin, the Demo Goblin. If it has Goblin in the name, I want a figure of it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So, Red Goblin, instantly, as soon as I heard the word Goblin, I wanted to snatch him up instantly. Uh, it's a very unique figure. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing yet. Uh, we've got some of the tendril pieces on the arms and legs here. They're very reminiscent of the Carnage pieces that we saw previously, but I don't believe they use the same mold pieces as Carnage did. Uh, but he has a new symbiote, which I'm grateful for because the more symbiotes the better. And he's a new Goblin figure, so two great tastes taste great together, allegedly. Let's look at our articulation, though. Actually, let's look at this head sculpt. That's unique. Um, the best word I've got for him so far is unique. Hopefully it's going to be better than just being unique. Hopefully it's going to be great. So, for our head articulation, we've got actually a pretty great range of motion downward. He can look down pretty well. And can look up pretty decent. Now, I will say I am a little bit disappointed that we didn't get a glider to go along with him. Uh, seems like half the time we get gliders, half the time we don't. Goblin characters are all known for their gliders, and his is a very unique one. I would have liked to have seen that even as a separate piece. Uh, just to kind of have him riding on his glider, because that would have been really cool. For our shoulder articulation... Better than a T-pose. It works. It just works. It just works. It's not bad. Um, He's got a great deal of motion going upward with the shoulders. Of course, we've got the bicep swivel. We also have the tendrils getting caught as I'm trying to do our articulation here. Because of that, we're actually going to do the left arm instead of the right. What? find out that he actually has a pretty decent flex to him. That's a pretty good flex. I'm pretty impressed there. I expected it to be a lot less. We do have some flash there keeping the forearm from getting all the way to the bicep, but it's not bad. That's a pretty decent flex. Uh, ah, we do have the standard inward and outward wrist articulation here. It doesn't go that far in, but it goes a decent degree out. Uh, mostly because the thumbs are getting in the way. Now these, I believe, are the same fingers that we saw on Cottonmouth and various other figures that just have the open claw hands. Now, allegedly this is slightly different because he should be able to hold a pumpkin bomb in his hand. And he can. I'm not sure I'm going to display him like this, because I'm pretty sure that pumpkin bomb is going to come falling out. But he can indeed hold his pumpkin bomb in his hand decently well. For our ab crunch. Wow, ladies, he is bending over backwards for you. Look at that. That is a fantastic degree of backward movement on that ab crunch. And, wow, look at that crunch. That's great. Gives him a little bit of a hunchback, but that's still a great crunch. I give credit where credit is due. 
that's some flexibility right there. We of course have our waist cut for our hip articulation. That's it. Uh, we're getting pretty much as far as we got with Puma. It's not great, it's not horrible. We've got our thigh cuts here for our double jointed knees. Mmm. It's not grand, but it's not horrible. Uh, I could definitely see a little bit better flexibility there, especially if we've got him on a glider where he's crouched down, uh, his knees pretty much into his chest, his feet can't even go as far forward as I want them to for that pose. Mmm. Ouch. That's that's not doing nearly what I want him to do. Especially since he's got that great forward ab crunch and that good enough uh, head articulation. If I could get him to bend this knee a little bit more, this could be incredible as a pose. With him on a glider swooping. But alas, we've got none of that. We do, of course, have boot cuts, even though we don't have boots with this character. For our ankle articulation, we've got a decent degree inward and a painful degree outward. For our forward foot articulation, that's it. That's all you're getting out of it. It's not bad, but it's definitely nowhere near what I was looking for. I wanted to go a little bit more forward so that we could really get that... That menacing stalking look to him. Uh, but we can go all the way on point. Which is kind of pointless with the goblin. All in all, he's a solid figure if you're a fan of the various Spider-Man goblin villains. Grab him. If you're a fan of the symbiotes, grab him. If you're a fan of both, you already have him. If you're a fan of Dan Slott's run grab him. If you're a fan of uniquely monster-looking characters with this unfortunately not bendable tail, but it's it's a serviceable tail. At least it lies flat as he's standing up, thankfully. It doesn't impede his articulation. Which, if it's not going to be beneficial, at least it's not going to be a hindrance. All in all, it's not bad. Um... Uh, Again, I'm not that familiar with Slot's run. Otherwise, I might be more inclined to like the character. Uh, but just because of the unique molding with the tail, uh, the unique look of him, I'm going to give him a 7. I'm going to give him a 7. He's, he's unique enough that he'll stand out on the shelf along with the other Green Goblins and the Demo Goblins and the Hob Goblins and, of course, Carnage, Venom, and all the other symbiotes. He'll stand out and be a nice segue between the two. He'll probably go on my display, just because he's so unique looking. So, next up, it's hero time. Was that a Ben 10 reference? Don't you worry about it. <laughs> so, for our next one, we've got a hero who I never thought would get made into a Marvel Legend. I mean... Never. I always hoped, but I never thought that they would give us one of the new warriors, Night Thrasher. Now, I'm a big fan of the character Night Thrasher. I've been a fan for a very long time. I've got a Topps trading card from back in the day of Night Thrasher, and I always thought he was really cool. I love that we finally have a Marvel Legend of him. I kind of want the rest of the new warriors, I'm not going to lie. I'd love to have a Namorita and a Speedball. Oh, I'd love to have a Speedball so much. If you need to, I'll even do Penance, but a Speedball would be pretty great. <laughs> so, we've got our window pane in the front, our artistic design on the side, our figure on the back, our blurb, and of course, our remaining lineup of figures. As a build to figure piece, he comes with the left leg of Kingpin. 
as opposed to the right leg, which came with our red goblin, our right arm, which came with black cat, our heads, which came with the symbiote Spider-Man, and the torso that, of course, came with Puma. Just for all of you people out there that want to know which part you're looking for. And who to search on eBay if you don't want to get the figure. This one? I feel like he's going to be a lot of part reuse, but I also feel like I'm really going to be excited because of who the figure is. So, let's get into it. We, of course, have that left leg that we were talking about of Kingpin. Whose cane was getting out of hand. Yes, that was a pun. Yes, you can deal with it. There we go. That's a little bit better way to hold that cane for him. That's looking pretty good. A little stockier than I was thinking he'd be, but still looking pretty good. And again, Kingpin's a pretty stocky looking character, so what else do you expect? Oh, the accessories here. So we have our twin Billy Clubs, which if you recognize them, that's because you're a Daredevil fan and you already have way too many pairs of these, or you're a Mockingbird fan and you have this same set from her, which was still just Daredevil's Billy Clubs. We have this very unique backpack piece, which is used for storage of the Billy Clubs and for storage of his skateboard, which actually has spinning wheels. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Uh, part of me wants to give him a nice tech deck or to just repaint this thing because it really could use the help. Uh, a unique thing to it with this skateboard, since they had the idea to mold the skateboard to give it to Night Thrasher, look at... I don't know if you guys can see the detailing there of all the scratching on the bottom of it. This board has been through quite a bit. Now what I love about this is that this backpack piece here actually fits everything into it. So, you can display, if you don't want to display him holding the board, it goes onto his back. If you don't want to display him holding the billy clubs, they clip right there. Now, I love when there's actual practical storage that goes along with the figure so that I don't need to have them displayed with their weapon in hand so it's not a requirement. Additionally, because of the unique backpack, Night Thrasher also has a very unique mold here for where the backpack clicks in. This has a very unique mold up here. I'm not sure for what purpose. Doesn't look like there's anything in particular that clicks in there. Hmm. Or is it just supposed to be a way of taking out some of the plastic so that this doesn't look horrendous on his back? Now this is very, very minimal paint, uh, but I'm not sure if it's a new mold or an old mold. Um, it feels very different from other figures that we've got. The elbow pads here are actual elbow pads. They even have little rivets along them right here, like actual armored elbow pads would. Same thing goes for our knee pads here, having rivets here and on the tops. Uh, I feel like those are actually new pieces. The hips are, or thighs rather, are very clearly a reuse. Um, but the lower halves seem very new, and so do the arms. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there, but it looks good. I'll give it that. It looks good. Even, I didn't recognize, or see this before, these shoulder pieces here also have those unique rivets to them. It's actually very unique 
for such a niche character. We're getting just surprised all kinds of ways today with niche characters. Be it Puma, be it Night Thrasher. Uh, we're getting some very unique, very cool molds done. So, let's start off with, of course, our neck articulation for Night Thrasher. He can look down decently well while he's doing a sick trick with his billy clubs in hand. And actually can look up pretty well as well. That's pretty nice. I still want to know what these two holes are in the back of his neck here. It's just so weird. We've got the two holes here for the actual... back piece, but I don't know what those are for. I really don't. It's really weird. As you can tell already, this tie-on is just held down by friction. Hmm. Anyway, for our shoulder articulation, because of our unique molds for our arms, that's it. He's not quite giving us a T-pose. It's okay, but that's nowhere near as flexible as we need Night Thrasher to be. He's a guy that skateboards around while knocking people in the head with a billy club. You expect him to have a little bit of unique, very agile articulation, and that's not really cutting the mustard. We, of course, have the bicep swivels, if it will swivel without moving the rest of the shoulder. We have the double jointed elbows with our unique elbow pad mold here. Mmm, but that looks to be all of the flex we're getting. Uh, it's not bad. But is it that good flex? I will ask you, ladies and gentlemen. Does it look like it's that good flex? You and I both know the answer. It's not. It's not. We have the inward and outward wrist articulation on him for both hands. For our, now I realize I shouldn't have put that on just yet, for our ab crunch. He can actually go a decent way back, not fantastic, but wow, he can bend forward incredibly well. Actually, now that I'm looking at him side by side, is that the same belt? That looks, that is the exact same belt in a different color scheme. You'd have thought if they'd have done that, they'd have used it in two different waves. But here we are, with two characters in the same wave, using the same belt. That's a little bit lazy, but... Part reuse, what can you do? We also, of course, have the hip articulation. Yes, the... Waist cut here is what I meant to say, not the hip articulation, the waist cut here which is being partially obscured by that belt. Again, kind of makes it so that it's not quite as obvious that he's got the cut there. For our hip articulation, he goes out pretty much as much as Puma did. Uh, it's not grand, but it's something. Again, I'd have expected a little bit better articulation out of him because of how agile the character is. We've got, of course, the thigh cuts here. The double-jointed knees. Uh, which go a fair degree back. I'm not going to say it's horrible. It's not. It's not the worst I've seen. Um, the very shiny new calves are a major... Actually, I'll say this. Seeing him in person, the shininess of all of his armor, minus the very matte shade of the calves, really sticks out. Uh, it even feels like a different type of plastic was used. I don't think I like that much. Um, that's unique. He has a straight up ball joint here on his feet, uh, meaning he can turn his feet in unique ways. Uh, not just his rocker ankle here, which we see go in and out, but also he can just turn his foot around without doing anything else here. That's actually really unique. Uh, we don't often see ball joints in modern Marvel Legends. 
Uh, he's got a actually fairly good degree forward range for his ankles. And going back, he can go pretty much on point, even with the armor on his calves here. That's actually really unique. Uh, all in all, I like him. I like him a lot. I'm a big New Warriors fan. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I am. I really, truly am. Uh, I kind of wish that they'd use them in the MCU for the whole, you know, Civil War thing. As they are the ones who started the Civil War in the comics. Uh, all in all, I like Night Thrasher. I like him. He's a good figure. He's the only version that we've gotten in yeesh, probably about 20 years. I'm talking since the 5 inch scale made by Toy Biz. Not anywhere near the Marvel Legend or even the Spider Man Classics lineup. And Spider Man Classics started in 2001, so it's probably been over 20 years since we've seen any figure at all of Night Thrasher. I'm really happy about it. Uh, I think they did a great job with him. I think he's got a... I'm not sure if his sculpt is unique. I was going to say he's got a unique sculpt with the knee pads and the elbow pads and even his shoulders, but I'm not sure if it's actually a unique sculpt or if it's just really well done with him. The different color calves, or different color thighs, rather, are really throwing me off. I'm not going to lie to you guys, it's really throwing me off, but it's not bad. It's, I don't know, not a bad figure. I know I've been given a lot of him today. He's a solid seven. He's an obscure character. He's kind of niche. You need to be a New Warriors fan to even know who he is. Or a fan of the 90s Spider-Man cartoon. Because he did make a couple appearances here and there. Um, but he's not a bad figure. I think I like him. And again, me being me... I want to get the whole team. I want to get all of the new warriors. I want Namorita. I want Speedball. I'll even take Penance if you can't give me Speedball. I prefer Speedball, but I'll take Penance. Just as many of them as you can, honestly. Moving on. We have an anti-hero who's kind of a bad person. Kind of. She's unique. So... For the final figure, before we get to our build to figure, we have Silver Sable. Now, this is the first time Silver Sable has ever been committed to Marvel Legends form. Uh, it's been quite a few years since we've gotten any Silver Sable figure, so I'm happy that we've got her. It's not quite the Silver Sablina from the Spider-Man PS4 game, but it's her more traditional comic book look, and I'm a fan of that. Let's get that first. Let's get this version first, then let's go on to that PS4 version. Because that was a pretty good look. That was a pretty good look at her. So, we've got our window pane here. We've got our artistic representation on the side. Our wonderfully done comic art. Our blurb. Our promo shot on the back. Our lineup. On the inside. Sable's not... Well, actually, she's coming with a decent amount of accessories. I was going to say she's not coming with that much. She's coming with a decent amount. Now, she has our... Right arm of Wilkes and Fisk. Which is also, if you're keeping count, our last piece of our build to figure for Wilkes and Fisk, the Kingpin. We might not say his name, but we are now. Because Willie Fisk is going to be, and say it with me, a big beefy boy and he is he is he is very beefy he's who really can use to lose a few pounds here if I'm being honest but he is an awesome looking figure um I'll get to any and all complaints and I'll get to his review in a minute I'm not gonna start looking at him too intently right now we'll see him in just a few minutes so first things first let's get out our nerf guns here And if you don't believe me, seriously, look them up. They're Nerf guns. These designs are straight up, one-to-one, -one, miniaturized versions of Nerf guns. 
They did the same trick with the cable that was released not too long ago, where they gave him just mini versions of Nerf's guns. Because why be original when you can use properties that you already own? Now, as you can already tell from the fact that these are sliding off, our thigh, I'm not going to say holksters, our thigh pouches here are just held down by gravity. Of course, our belt is just kind of loose here. Our back holster here is just kind of frictioned on here based on the fact that it's hair and arms and you can't really get it off. No way. <laughs> okay, that makes me pretty happy. So we've got our miniaturized Nerf guns here and here. Getting into the figure herself. It's not bad. Just looking at her aesthetically, she's not bad at all. I, I like the steely look that they gave her. It's a look of determination that a Russian spy would have. Uh, all of the kibble around here on the waist and the hips and the shoulder, not quite holster. It works for the character. I can easily see her teaming up with Black Cat, which of course we all know is part of a comic book run for Silver and Black. Additionally, I see that we're going to have the same problem as we did with Black Cat, and it is this mane of hair. So, getting into our articulation. That's her backward neck articulation. That's it. That's everything. For our forward neck articulation, she can go pretty decently far forward. Going back, nope. That mane of hair is just stopping her dead in her tracks. For our shoulder articulation... We are stopping straight at a T-pose. That's it. That's all we're getting out of her. That might be excusable if she had, oh, I don't know, say, bicep swivels. Or if maybe she had double-jointed elbows. Hasbro. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. I'll say it till the cows come home. Give your female figures better articulation. They will sell better. Because collectors want them. I guarantee you, collectors really want Silver Sable. They just want her articulation to not be limited. Anyway, no bicep swivel. Only the single jointed elbow, which means, yep, that's all we're getting. All we're getting from her is 90 degrees. Are we getting that good flex? You better believe we're not. We're just getting a field goal. That's it. That's all that we got. Now, one nice thing that I noticed, she has the up and down wrist articulation for her right hand. Her left hand has the in and out, which means that you can put your first Nerf gun in this hand. Even with her trigger finger, not quite going along with how you're trying to pose her. And give her that look of pointing a gun down at you. So she can look down in kind of disdain. She can also kind of sling her rifle over her shoulder if she had better elbow articulation she could at least. But, that's a very nice thing to have, is one and one. I honestly prefer that all Legends would have exactly that. One in and out wrist articulation, one up and down. That would make for much better posability and better possibilities. With posability, at least for me. We, of course, only have an ab swivel here, which means there's no waist cut, there's no ab crunch, all we have is the swivel. So, means we get a little bit of articulation side to side. 
that's as far forward as she's bending, and that's as far back. Uh, you would think someone who's so acrobatic as a Russian spy would be able to do more acrobatic moves. Nope. That's what we've got here for our thigh articulation. Our hips are going that wide, and that is it. That's everything we've got. Uh, we, of course, have the thigh cut, as seen here. We have the double jointed knees, if they want to go back, which can actually go back a decent degree. Uh, that's a fairly decent degree of motion for the knee there. Uh, we do not have any kind of boot cut, even though she's wearing boots. For our ankle articulation, We've got a decent degree in, a fairly painful degree out. An alright degree of forward motion on the ankle, and she can go almost on point backward. All in all, I'd say this figure gets a 6 from me. She's very limited in her articulation compared to Night Thrasher, which... <laughs> If I told myself that Night Thrasher would have better articulation than Silver Sable, I'd have slapped myself, because I'd have been a liar. But here we are, where Night Thrasher has better articulation and more unique articulation than Silver Sable, a staple of Spider-Man games, cartoons, and comics for ages. And her articulation is less than that of Night Thrasher from the New Warriors. She could be a lot better. That's my problem, is for Silver Sablina, I expect a much, much better effort than this. This is just, it's a low tier. Silver Sable is an awesome character, and I love the character. It's really cool. She's awesome in the comics. She's awesome in the games. She's awesome whether she's trying to kill Spider-Man or help him. She's awesome in pretty much everything. And this just feels like a cop-out. I know a lot of people are buying up this Silver Sable figure to use it as a Lilandra body. Lilandra, I believe that's correct. I'm probably saying her name completely wrong. For the Mystique Head. Mystique Head? Yes. But we'll be getting into that next week. Not this week, but next week when we do the unboxing for that X-Men wave. The Caliban wave. All in all, if you're a fan of Silver Sable and you want a legend, grab her. If you want Silver Sable in your display, since we haven't gotten any other Marvel Legend of her ever, grab her. If you really want a unique female character, pass. She's only so unique, and honestly, the tooling is pretty lazy on her. Alright. We've gone through our characters. We've seen the good. We've seen the bad. We've seen the Silver Sable. Damn! So, last up, we have our build a figure. You know him from Daredevil, but you might not remember him as originally being a Spider-Man villain, and that is Wilkson Fisk. We don't say his name. Well, we are now, because Willie is, and say it with me, a big, beefy boy. In fact, this is how he looks compared to our Silver Sable that we just saw. He is a mighty hefty character. He is big. He is great. And I already am loving this figure. Here he is compared to Puma, one of our larger characters from today's wave. He is still much bigger. He stands heads and shoulders above every other character seen today. 
the sculpt on Wilkson here is awesome. I love it. I love the extra heads. I love the more resolute businessman where you can almost believe that Wilkes and Fisk is indeed a legitimate businessman. One thing I do not like is already trying to do anything at all with two hands. It just can't be done. His shoulder articulation isn't enough for him to hold down to the cane one hand on top of the other. Uh, in fact, his articulation is so limited, I can't even force him to hold the top of the cane in any way, shape, or form. Because uh, he is just that big and beefy. However, he's a great looking figure. And if you don't have that decade old, two decade old figure of Wilkes and Fisk from the face off wave, or face off two packs rather, with Daredevil, then this is the only Willie Fisk you're getting in the Marvel Legends size. So, let's get into exactly what we're looking at here. As we saw before, the jacket does come off. Honestly, I'm going to keep on the jacket uh, just because I think it looks really great on him. I like the detailing of the fact that the shirt that he's wearing here underneath the black shirt actually has a bit coming out from the bottom of the sleeve so that you know it's not just a one-off thing here. It's not just a dickie that he's wearing, it's actually a shirt. Uh, the necktie, if you look closely, is slightly loosened. It's not quite tight to his skin, and he definitely does not have that first button buttoned. Uh, it's also because of that that you can see some of his skin for his neck, and even a little bit to his chest here, where he doesn't have that first button buttoned. Button, button, right. button, button, left. Additionally, his pinky ring, which is a big thing uh, in the Marvel show, Marvel Netflix shows rather, they showed him with those cufflinks. In the comics, it's the pinky ring. Every representation you're going to find of him is going to have that pinky ring, and it looks great. <laughs> they actually did a really good job with painting that. I love what they've done. So, for our articulation of our rather large mob boss here. Our forward neck articulation, that's it. He's not looking down on very many people, even though he looks down on everyone. He's looking up with a decent degree of hope, more so looking up to see Spider-Man in the corner of his office. For our arm articulation. All right. So we're at least getting to a full T-pose from Willie. Not bad. We also have single jointed elbows. So we've got the turn there. And unfortunately, no matter how you turn it, that is as good as that is going to get. Now, Wilkson, we know that you're a strong man. We know that you've got that good flex. Is that it? It is not. That's that. Nah, you can't even see my arm here. I, look at that. That's that's weak. That's pathetic, man. We need that good flex from Willie, so that he can really get his arms in there and start strangling Spider-Man. <sighs> Unfortunately, that's not what we're getting here. A lot of it is based around the mold here from the jacket, just being too detailed, but also too much flash here on the sides. To let him do anything more than this. That's barely even a Donkey Kong pose. We do have the inward and outward articulation for his hands, but because of the wrist here, where you can see that shirt and the cuff of his jacket, it's that's as good as you're getting it. Now the next question is can he actually hold the cane? Oh, it takes a little bit of doing and it's not 100% secure, but you can make him use the cane as an actual cane instead of just as a weapon. And seeing it from the front here instead of the top-down view, 
Uh, that's the thing. He's not holding on to it securely, but you can make him at least pose with it. He has no waist articulation, or no waist cut, rather. He has no ab crunch, but he does have an ab swivel. Uh, I know Wilkson's not that agile, but I'd have liked to have seen an ab crunch on him. Especially since our side-to-side -side articulation is pretty much non-existent. For our forward articulation, that's it. And for our backward, that's it. He's pretty much just standing upright. Uh, you're not getting him to do a whole lot else. At least you can get him to kind of turn because of it. But that's the best, and it doesn't even look that good when you do it. For his hip articulation... Wilkson. Wilkson. That's it. That is all the hip articulation we're getting out of him. Today's run was not great for hip articulation, now was it? Uh, e. It could definitely have been better. We of course have the thigh cut here. Our knees are single-jointed knees, not double-jointed, amazingly. That's right, only single-jointed knees. Uh, it makes the sculpt look a little bit nicer, but at the same time, that's as far as he's flexing. That's all of the knee flex you're getting out of him. That's barely a run. That's not a flex. Once again, knee replacement surgery, I'm telling you to go back to therapy. Because that's not good enough for you to get out of the hospital, my man. That's that's just not cutting it. For our rocker ankles. Do we have rocker ankles? Do we have... It seems like we've got ankle articulation. But it seems like that's all that we're getting outward. That's all that we're getting inward. That's all we're getting forward. And that's everything going back. His ankle articulation is essentially non-existent. It's there pretty much just to balance him. And that, it's not doing the greatest job. Um. Ouch. Now again, I know Wilkson Fisk is a big beefy boy. Both in comics and in figure form. But I expected him to be a little bit better for how he's articulated here. I want him to be able to hold Spider-Man up by the neck and really be reeling back this punch to just knock the ever-living daylights out of him. And if anything, that's how I'm going to be displaying him is pretty much just like this with Spidey in hand ready to get punched right in the... just right in the face. Uh... Wilkes and Fisk is a big want for getting more figures. Uh, now I only have the variant chase version from the face-off line, where it was Wilkson in a black suit, not a white suit, with a red cravat here instead of a purple or white or black tie. Uh... And honestly, usually I think of Wilkson Fisk with an ascot or cravat on his neck. Not so much with just a standard tie. Uh, but all in all, it is still a really nice figure. If you don't have any other Wilkson Fisk representation, you're going to want this guy. If you do, he's not bad. Uh, of course, later on I'll be uploading shots comparing the old and the new figure. Um... Uh, as the build to figure of the wave, he is a big beefy boy. Is he 100% worth it? Yeah. That depends. Personally, yeah, he's still going to go into my display. He's going to go in angry. He's not going to go in just plain faced. Because uh, if you can give him more emotion than do. All in all, he's okay. Is he the build the figure we all wanted and deserved? Not really. Is he the best version of Kingpin we've gotten in nearly two decades? Yeah. It's the only version of Kingpin we've gotten in nearly two decades. What do you expect? 
So, I promised that we'd have two bonus unboxings, and we do. So, the first bonus unboxing is actually going to be the Vintage Wave Scarlet Spider. Now, you'll notice this is a lot different from our standard Marvel Legends. Uh, it has a backing like we used to see back in the 80s and 90s, uh, with the bubble front instead of the box. Uh, we have other figures that came out at the same time, but there's no wave and there's no build to figure. They're just retro figures. Additionally, that means that it's not going to be one quick little cut and sliding them out of the box. That means that we're actually going to need to cut around this bubble here just to remove Ben Parker. So, we're going to make a small cut here and very carefully cut around the bubble. So as not to damage the packaging too much. Now, some of you might be saying, didn't we already get this figure? And the answer is yes and no. Uh, we did receive a version of Scarlet Spider back in... Oof, the Rhino Wave, we got a version of Scarlet Spider. Now, this version is a little bit different. It does have the extra hands, but it also has the additional Ben Riley head. And that's actually what made me want to get him so badly. Because I already have the entire build to figure for Rhino. I did not get this figure. I bought the head separately online. But, what we do have is a unique blonde head. And I'm sure you guys already see where that's going. It's going directly onto my spare Mr. Fantastic body to make a perfect Johnny Storm. And that is my whole reasoning behind getting this figure, is for the kit bashing together of a depowered Human Torch. So, inside the packaging, what you're seeing is what you're getting here. Uh, you've got Scarlet Spider, you've got two extra thwipping hands, and you've got the extra Ben Riley head, which, as we always do, let's see him with both heads on so that we know what both look like. Well, I do like the cocky attitude we're getting from Ben Riley here. I think I called him Ben Parker earlier. If I did, I apologize. Uh, I like the attitude we're getting, but at the same time, it's not for me. Honestly, of all the figures I like unmasked, I prefer this one to be, surprisingly, masked. So, let's check out our articulation. We've got a great degree of forward neck articulation, and a surprising degree of backward neck articulation. Uh, the hoodie, I thought, would actually interfere with that, and it doesn't at all. For our shoulders... We're getting a T-pose out of him. We do not have the butterfly shoulders on him as we did the symbiote Spider-Man. Um, but we've got a decent pose going. Uh, it's all right articulation. I expect a little bit better from Spider-Man. I usually expect those butterfly shoulders, but I know this particular chest is a very unique mold just for this particular character. We do, of course, have the bicep swivels, the double-jointed elbows... Where we're getting that good flex. Thank you, Spidey. We are getting that good flex. Again, confetti, something. Because that's really nice. We have the in and out wrist articulation. It is hindered a little bit by our bracelets here that he's got on, which contain his web fluid and his web shooters. But because of how accurate that is to the comic, I'm not even complaining. We, of course, have an ab crunch with uh, some forward ab articulation. It's not grand, but it's something. And 
actually a decent degree backwards. So ladies, he's bending over backwards for you. But he cannot do a sit-up. <laughs> now he does have a waist cut, but I wouldn't suggest moving it too much as the molded belt here with more of those web fluid cartridges does uh, very much get in the way. It also very greatly uh, hides that waist cut, but you can see his shirt is actually sculpted with places for those web fluid containers going all around it. For his hip articulation. That's all we're getting. It's something. It's not the worst I've seen, but it's definitely not the best. Uh, it's no worse than we got with the Symbiote Spider-Man today, but that's not saying a lot. I'd prefer him to have all kinds of hip articulation because of the poses that Spider-Man gets into. Uh, we also have, of course, the thigh cuts here. The double-jointed knees, which can go all the way back. Now, that's what I'm talking about. If we can get that up pretty much to his chest... This can actually get into a pretty decent Spider-Man-like pose flying through the air. Uh, he does not have boot cuts on him. He does have rocker ankles, which can go a disturbing degree outward and a painful degree inward. Uh, he can go a pretty decent way forward with his ankles, and of course he can go all the way on point, which is exactly what I was looking to do with the pose that I was kind of working up here for him. Because it's Spider-Man, and if he can do all kinds of bendy articulation, that's exactly how you want to pose him, is bending as best as possible. I only kind of wish that they gave him some webbing, so that we can pop this out, put this one on, have him thwipping through the air. Well, it's all nice and bundled up. Now, of course, we've got webbing from other Spider-Man figures. But he he can actually get into a pretty decent Spider-Man ball here to go flying through the air. Of course, these little pouches are just kind of held down by friction. But that's actually a great looking pose. Uh, I'd need to, of course, work on this arm here. Uh, possibly have it going up like that with another bit of web coming out from this hand. Uh, or even have him winding up for a punch here, flipping downward at someone like Wilkes and Fisk. Wilkes getting ready to clock him. Actually, that's a pretty good looking pose. I very much like this figure. I'm not going to lie to you guys. If you can get your hands on this Scarlet Spider, grab him. He's fun. He's awesome for a Scarlet Spider. He's awesome just for a Spider-Man. And, again, if you're like me and you bought an extra Mr. Fantastic, just to use that Fantastic Four body and make a depowered Johnny Storm, this is the head to use. This guy here, it might be considered a Ben Riley head. I'm not going to lie to you. That is more of a... Johnny Storm head than we're ever going to get. All in all, this figure is a solid 8. Now, I know I said how much I love it. Why did I not give it a 9 or a 10? Well, the torso articulation is a little bit limited and no butterfly shoulders. Otherwise, he would be at least a 9. This is a awesome figure. I love everything they did with it. It's part of the retro wave. I'd say order it online. I think you can even order it from Hasbro Pulse themselves so that you can get this really cool Scarlet Spider figure. Finally, because I said there's going to be two bonus unboxings, 
and I'm a man of my word. So, we've seen that there's a movie that came out recently. The last Marvel movie in all of Phase 3, and that is Spider-Man Far From Home. So, we have the Spider-Man Homecoming pack that came out just in time for Spider-Man Far From Home. Where we get Spider-Man in that very cool looking jacket from his high school. And we get the MCU's version of MJ. Not Mary Jane. I repeat, she is not Mary Jane Watson. She's not supposed to be Mary Jane Watson. If you're looking for Mary Jane Watson, go to the comics. Go to the Tobey Maguire movies. Not this universe. This is Michelle Jones, a.k.a. MJ. So, looking at what we've got here, we've got our window pane on the front, our artistic pieces on the sides, which are not artistic, just drawings, but instead silks from the movie. We also have that promotional picture where we get this version of Spider-Man. I only wish that they gave him the headphones, but that's all right. We've got Star-Lord's headphones, and yeah, he's probably going to get those. We also have the blurb about where they know each other from. It's Midtown. We already know this. It's not something new to anybody who's seen a movie or read a comic book. It's Midtown High. So, inside the box we've got what a tangled web back here, which also looks kind of like shattered glass. We have two extra hands for each character and an extra head for MJ. which I'm already a fan of. Let's get them out and see exactly what we're looking at here. Now, for MJ, we also have a gripping hand and this kind of outstretched hand. Uh, that is definitely a plus for me. Because I know I already have a Morning Star for her to hold, much like she does in Spider Man Far From Home. I'd say spoiler alert there, but we've already seen that in trailers and other pieces of. Marketing from the new movie. Her Funko Pop is even holding the Morning Star. We'll get into her in just a moment. First things first, let's get into our friendly neighborhood Spider Man here. Of course, this is the suit he was wearing in Spider Man Far From Home. Now, kind of a unique thing that I did not realize initially is that his jacket here is not one piece, it is actually two separate unique pieces. It is the outside jacket and the inside hoodie. Um, that's actually pretty cool. That makes for a layered look that doesn't just look layered, but actually is layered. Uh, now you'll note that there's holes here on the sides. Uh, it's not a full vest on the inside there, but it works well enough. Now, of course, because I don't know if the chest is actually a Peter Parker chest. It is a Spider-Man chest. Uh, I was going to say it might not have double joint or uh, butterfly shoulders. It does not, but that doesn't change the fact that it still works just fine. For our head articulation. He can look down a decent ways and can actually look up pretty well as well. For our shoulder articulation, we've got better than a T-pose going. All right. We also have the bicep swivel, and his double-jointed elbows can actually get behind his head. 
So, the important question of can he do the pose that's seen on the box is with a little bit of doing, because this shoulder, or that elbow rather, does not want to move. The answer is, yeah, decently well. Uh, of course, I would change this fist to a thwipping hand. But yeah, he can actually do that decently well with the headphones from Star-Lord. I'm sure it would look even more convincing. He does, of course, have the in and out wrist articulation on him. The only negative I'm saying right now is looking at the hands on him. The paint is a little muddy. Um, the hands just kind of look like a mess from the front. From the back, they look fine. But they're kind of a muddy mess from the front. Uh, also, kind of a unique and interesting thing is if you look there, he's got a little bit of dirt on his sleeve. I think that's actually done there on purpose, or it's just an errant wash, because they clearly did too much of a wash on these hands. Or maybe it's just some extra paint from the cuffs, which, again, since he's wearing the hoodie here, uh, they gave a cuff underneath the jacket to show that he's indeed wearing that hoodie all over. Kind of a neat detail. For his ab crunch, we are getting a great deal of articulation going forward. And a decent degree going back. Of course, the jacket is really limiting exactly how much of it goes back, but it's not bad. He's got our waist swivel here. For our hip articulation, ooh, that's not great. It's not horrible, but that's definitely leaving something lacking here. There's a lot lacking there. Who am I kidding? Uh... We've got the hip cut, or thigh cut here. So I can words today, I swear I can. The double jointed knees actually go all the way back. Well done, Spidey. Which means that we can get that double jointed knee here. For our ankle articulation, he's got the rocker ankles going a painful degree outward, a decent degree inward can put his foot a fair amount forward and can go on point back. So, to answer the question once and for all of can we recreate the pose from the box, the pose from the poster, the answer is yeah. Yeah, actually we can pretty well. That's actually really good. Might even be how I display him so that I've got that casual lying down, literally asleep on the job, Tom Holland. Which, for anyone that doesn't know, that's how they got that picture. Uh, it wasn't a planned press photo. Tom Holland came out and said that he was just lying back rusting on set while wearing the costume and listening to music someone said that looks cool and they just came up to him and took a picture of him now that's allegedly the story i'm not sure how true it is but tom holland's not one to really keep quiet tom's got a bad habit of spilling all the secrets ever from marvel so if he says that's how they did it, I'm apt to believe him. Honestly, that looks really cool. Moving on to our final figure review of the day. We have Marvel's MJ. So, we've got the two different hairstyles. Her more serious, all the hair is down, a stoic look, and her slight wry smile, something we expect from this MJ, uh, as she has quite a mischievous way about her, where she we expect that wry smile. Uh, we we really do. When she's asking people why they're taking pictures of people in the bathroom, she's gonna have that wry smile on. 
for her neck articulation. Now, of course, I'm using this one to test the neck articulation because this ponytail is going to get in the way a lot less than this mane of hair that we've got. She's got a pretty amazing downward range for her neck. And going up, she can almost look up as far as Spider-Man can. That's pretty amazing. For her shoulder articulation. She actually can go up more than T-pose. Alright. Of course, she has... I, I'm, I'm tired of even saying it at this point. I, I am. I'm tired of it, Hasbro. I'm tired of saying how you guys don't give your female figures enough articulation. Because she has single jointed elbows and no bicep swivel. Because that's all we're getting out of her. That's it. That's her shoulder articulation. That is not that good flex. That's barely 90 degrees. She has the in and out wrist articulation. Uh, she's got the two splayed open hands. I'm not sure why. Uh, she is neither psychic, and this hand really looks a little spindly and very alien-like. Uh, I'm not a fan of that. I'm more so a fan if we pop on her grip hand so I can give her that morning star. Which at least she can get her hands in a good enough position to hold said morning star all right that'll work her jacket is soft goods so it's a little flexy um, because of the patterns on the jacket and on the sleeves here and the rolled up half sleeve with the watch here I would not suggest removing the jacket um, it would just it wouldn't really make the character flow uh, she only has a waist swivel instead of having an ab crunch. Uh, and our side to side, you're looking at. That's it. Next to nothing. Her forward and backward, that's as far forward as she's going. That's as far back. She can go farther backward than she can forward, but it's still nothing to write home about. Are you kidding me? She has a place here for a waist swivel. A waist cut. And she doesn't have it. She clearly has a difference between her shirt and her pants, and you could have easily thrown in a waist cut right there. But you didn't, Hasbro. You didn't. And that's lazy. And you should be ashamed of yourselves. Your music's bad and you should feel bad. For our hip articulation. We're getting kind of the same problem we did with Black Cat, where if we try and go just plain outward, uh, the hips aren't wanting to go, but they move a slight bit forward to make it so that she's actually got a great... She actually has the best hip articulation we've seen today. Uh, we do have the thigh cuts here, the double-jointed knees, which go... Pretty much as far back as Spider-Man's. Which is a nice thing to say. Uh, we do not have a boot cut, even with separately done boots. Uh, we do have the ankle articulation here with the rocker ankles in and out. A incredibly painful degree. Uh, she can go forward to a point where it looks like she's walking just on her heel. Because that does not look pleasant. And can go back... Pretty much on point. All in all for the two-pack, it's okay. I'm not going to lie to you and say it's perfect, but I love it. I think they could have done better with MJ. Spidey is pretty good. Um, I like the articulation to him. I like how he's looking. I like what they did here. Uh... 
it's pretty awesome looking. The Spider-Man, I like. The MJ, it's nice to have, but I'm not sure that I love the figure. All in all, if you can find it, as a note, this set, I don't know if it's exclusively at Target, or if that's just the only place where I've seen it, um, but it is available at your local retailers now. If you want an MJ because of Far From Home, this is the only figure that we've gotten of her, and it's a decent figure. Is it perfect? No. Is it decent? Yeah. If you want your own little plastic version of Zendaya, then grab it. If you don't, and you just want this really nice-looking Spider-Man doing the pose from the movie poster, grab it. All in all, I'd say to try and get it on sale, because I'm not sure if it's worth full price. Uh, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, I'd give the set, just because of the extra hands, the extra head... The fact that it's the only version of MJ from the MCU that we've got, and the movie poster version of Spidey. I'm going to give it a 7. Um, for the price, it's probably more of a 6. It definitely has some work that could be done. Try and cr If you can find it, try and catch it on sale. All in all, it's not a bad set, though. It's not bad. All right, that wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for joining in. So, we've done our unboxing of the Spider-Man Kingpin Wave, but that means that this Kingpin build figure is done. What can we do with it? Tune in next week to find out, because next week we are going to be doing the unboxing of the X-Men Caliban Wave. Now. In addition to that, we do have several bonus figures. I will spill the beans on one of the bonus figures for next week. It is Professor Charles Xavier, who comes with an additional head to use with this build figure here to make him into the Shadow King. That might even be the way I'm going to display him from now on, depending on how that head looks once we've got it on. We will see next week. In the meantime, thank you all so much for joining have a great day, guys. Join us next week for that X-Men unboxing. Let me know what you thought about it on my Twitter, Vamp Preacher. At Vamp Preacher, let me know what you thought of the wave. Let me know if there's anything you're excited about. San Diego Comic-Con is going on right now. It's ending today. We just got revealed a ton of new figures. A strong guy build to figure. Bro Thor is a big year as a build figure, which I'm excited for. Heimdall's getting his own figure. Yeah! White Armor Valkyrie. Yeah! Vision in a single pack and not needing to pay the ridiculous scalper prices for the two pack that they made of him. Oh yeah, I'm down. I'm down for that. So, thank you so much for joining me, guys. Have a great day. Remember, keep it nerdy.